Hello and welcome back to the WavTool tutorial series. In this video, we're doing a deep dive on the arrangement panel. So to start, let's clear out some of the other panels. I'm just going to minimize the sample library by clicking on this little button up here. And we can shrink this bottom panel down a little bit to give us more room to look at the arrangement panel. Okay, so the main things I wanna show you in the arrangement panel are the ways that you can interact with clips and the ways that you can interact with tracks. Let's start with clips. This is an audio clip. And this up here is a, a MIDI clip. MIDI clips contain notes, audio clips contain recorded audio. Let's put some notes in this clip just so that we have something to anchor ourselves to. I'm gonna do that by choosing some composer suggestions. You can click on these blue buttons down here to add some AI generated notes into an empty clip. Okay, so now the first interaction I wanna show you is looping a clip. This clip is, uh, it occupies four bars right now, starting from bar one, ending at bar five. Um, and if we click on the top right side, on the right edge of the top portion of the clip and start dragging our mouse out to the right, the clip will extend and it will loop its contents for as long as we want to extend the clip. I can also drag the left side of the clip to change the length this way. We can click and drag out to loop it back in time, or we can click and drag on the right side to loop it forward in time. We can also duplicate a clip. And there's an important distinction between duplicating and looping. So to duplicate the clip, there are a few options. We can right click or two finger click on a, on a Mac uh, touchpad and then select duplicate this way. Or we can press command D or on a PC, you can press control D. All of these are going to duplicate the clip. Now there's a difference between duplicating a clip and looping it. And that is that when you loop a clip, any change that you make to the contents of the clip will apply to all loops of that clip. Whereas when it's duplicated, those changes are local to the individual copy of the clip that you're editing. So to illustrate this, let's go back to this first clip here, and I'm just gonna delete these first three chords. So down in the note editor, I'll click and drag a box over them and press delete or backspace to remove the notes. And you can see up here that those notes have only been removed from this first clip, but they're still present in the next three that we duplicated. I'm gonna press Command Z, you could use Control Z on a PC to bring those notes back. Now I'm gonna take this clip and once again, select the top right edge and click and drag this out to loop it. This is gonna replace the other clips that were there before. And now let's delete those three chords again. I'll click and drag that same box and press delete or backspace. And now you can see that those notes have been removed from all of these copies of the clip because it's really just one clip that's repeating its contents over and over. Okay, now um, the same applies to audio clips. If I click and drag on either edge, that will extend this, this clip out. It's gonna loop in exactly the same way. And um, I'm not gonna get into detail on how you can manipulate audio from down here, but just know that if we were to change the contents of this clip, you'll see that the change applies to every iteration of the loop, just as it did with the MIDI clip from before. Now, if we click and drag, not on the edges of the top portion, but in the middle of the top portion, we can use this to move the clip over in time. You click and drag and it's gonna move. The last area that we can click on is the area below this top section. If I click and drag in here, we're going to select a span of time um, within or containing the clip that we're, that we're clicking on. We could use this, for example, to delete a portion of a clip. So let's say I wanted to get rid of these uh, last few bits of, of audio here. I can click and drag underneath the top section and then press delete or backspace. And that's gonna remove that part of the clip and give us two new clips, this short one here and this, and this longer one here. I'm gonna press Command Z or Control Z to undo that, and we'll get back to our complete clip. Now you may have noticed that when I'm selecting here, it's always snapping to these grid lines that are up, up top. If those grid lines are too close or too far apart, you can use the plus and minus buttons here to change the, 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 the grid snapping size. If I click plus a few times, the grid size is going to get bigger. If I click minus a few times, it's gonna get smaller. Um, and you'll notice as well that this lock option is currently turned off. And what that means is as we zoom into the arrangement panel, the grid is gonna automatically resize as we zoom in to sort of allow us to just quickly zoom in to get a finer grid setting. To zoom in, we have a few different options. I can hold Command or Control on a PC and then scroll to zoom in and out. And you'll notice that the grid size changes as I zoom. I can also click and drag on the edges of this window down here. We call this the mini map and it's kind of a quick and easy way for you to adjust what's on screen in the arrangement panel. Next, um, while we're looking at the, 
at the arrangement panel and sort of navigating around within it, we can scroll up and down using our, our mouse wheel normally. Um, I'll just add some more instruments so that there's some stuff to scroll up and down into. If I scroll up and down, the panel moves up and down. If you have a touchpad, you can also scroll side to side the same way. And if you don't have a touchpad, you just have a mouse wheel, you can hold shift and scroll up and down to scroll sideways. So scrolling up and down normally, scrolling up and down while holding shift. And with this, you should be able to easily navigate around your project. OK, now let's move over to the left side. On the left side are the tracks. And you may have noticed that I was clicking and dragging on the bottom part of the track to resize them. And as you do this, it's going to reveal more controls inside of the track. You can also change the size of tracks quickly by clicking the minus button and clicking the plus button. There are three different sizes that it will cycle through. This uh, completely collapsed size, a sort of intermediate size, and then finally a, a large size with all of the controls exposed. I'll go into more detail on these controls in an upcoming video, but um, for now, just know that the size of the track will affect which controls are visible. One of the most important inputs, um, or one of the most important controls, especially on an audio track, is this Discover Inputs button. And once it's been clicked, the set of options that you have for choosing an audio input. So if you have a special microphone plugged into your computer, this is the list where you'll choose that as the input for an audio track if you're going to record. OK, that's it for this tutorial on the Arrangement Panel. I hope this has been helpful. Um, in upcoming videos, we're going to look at more panels like the Note Editor. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again soon.